How's it going, everybody? Zach Kyleman here alongside my good buddy, pal, co-host, and uh, sometimes mentor in terms of how I look at certain things in terms of the content space, uh, the ref himself, as we are here for episode 11 of the USFL podcast, and we are kicking things off with plenty of discussion that came up recently uh, in terms of some coaching staff arrangements, rivalries, that's right. We get to talk about the USFL arranging rivalries of all things, <laughs> betting odds, officiating. There's a lot on the uh, docket. Uh, how you doing, Stefan? How you doing, good sir? Doing pretty. Week's- pretty dang good. Pretty dang good. Feeling good. Like I said, you know, we were talking about this earlier. I thought, you know what, we might have a little bit of a slow show this week, but the USFL. You know what they did? They delivered. They brought us some more news. Like you mentioned, those coaching staffs. We had been reporting on little tidbits that we had picked up along the way, kind of like Hansel and Gretel. But now, yeah. now we got the mother load. We're going over them. And I mean, we're just over four weeks from Springstock, baby. The party's oh in the flipping parking lot. I couldn't get more jazzed. We got... We got some guests. We have some things going on. We have a sponsor, Royal Retros, which Mm -hmm. we mentioned this before. We mentioned one of our giveaways was going to be that replica Steve Young jersey, L.A. Express. Well, it just arrived in the mail. So you kids, look at this. Now, this is what I was saying earlier. This is, now I'm going to try to get this into frame here, real stitching. This isn't just printed this is this is top notch stuff. Now, how do you win this bad boy? Well, you definitely you got to show up to Spring Stock, but we have giveaways for people that show up in person and if you tune in online because you know what we get it, we get it. Not everybody can come to Birmingham, so make sure you set that reminder. It's over on YouTube, 12 p.m. Central, April 16th. I'm getting jazzed. I'm more, I'm, I'm, I'm hype about the stream. I'm hype about the show. I'm more hyped about meeting everybody, right? Yes. There's, I mean, you've never met Tron. I've met him once, but again, that was mm-hmm. over two years ago at this point. Uh, we have a bunch of the, just people from online that we've talked to in the chat. Uh, like I said, our good sponsor, Royal Retros, uh, word is there may be a little situation there. I'll wait for confirmation to to go into detail, but it, I mean, it feels like just yesterday we were just dreaming up the idea and here we are. I know we're, as of we're recording right now, it's 30 days out. We're, we're a month away from that and the inaugural game on the 16th. Hard to believe. I, I I know we, we keep saying that every milestone we get to, but you know, stuff is kind of creeping up on us now. Now it's uh, it's it's getting more and more real. Obviously, the rosters there, training camps less than a week away. Report, players reporting less than a week from now. It's getting real. Stephon. It's getting oh my god! Real. I mean, next thing you know, we're going to be at Summerstock July third for that <laughs> championship game in Canton, Ohio. Don't even get me started. I mean, yet. the way that things are flying. Jeez. I mean, eleven episodes in. 11, I, I mean, last week when we hit double digits, again, it feels like we just started. We, we kind of did. Yeah. But 11 episodes in, I mean, sign sign it up. Sign everybody up for following us. So far, we're right at the cusp of that 2,600 subscribers on YouTube. But once we get to 5K, Zach, what's going on? Oh, we're giving away a jersey. We're giving away another jersey, man. It's going to be a good one. 5K sub giveaway. Will be a jer- will be a jersey giveaway for yourself, randomly drawn, just like the other ones we've been doing. And we do have guys that have gotten their prizes, and they're very happy about it. Chris Mason, I know, is very happy to get his tickets. I talked with him recently, and he was one of our winners. Uh, looking to hopefully meet up with him for the inaugural week when we get down there too. Uh, so yeah, 5K subs. If you subscribe to our channel, you are entered into that. Also, with our Discord being in there too, you are also entered for that as well. Um, And by the way, if you're following us as we're getting through these tidbits, social media at USFL podcast, besides just the YouTube member, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, you can catch up with us on all of those platforms and keep up with the show. When new shows drop, when interviews drop, clips drop, all the stuff that's our show, 
just check it out. Follow us along on there and uh, be sure to do that. And finally, I, we didn't even mention this with our partners at Royal Retros. Remember, we got that coupon code, 10% off your purchase at Royal Retro Retros. Just use USFL Podcast when you check out. That's on any purchase that you make on the site. Just go there, use the coupon code USFL Podcast at checkout. 10% off your entire purchase you up the show and you get some pretty sweet swag from a company that makes some pretty damn good merchandise that is for any of your retro football and sports apparel. So just saying, check that all out while you have the chance. Now let's get into the meat potatoes of this whole thing, shall we? I think so. I think yeah, so. Let's do this. Well, let's start, let's start with the, I, the, all this is fun, but one that I think was, uh, when they dropped it, they, the, I think the folks at the front office and maybe the social media department were like, let's have a, let's have a lot of fun with, with this. So uh, every the in the NFL, in any football entity, even college, you know, you got the rivalry games. You got the t- you got the teams that either hate each other or you look you you go into the calendar, you circle it on the map, you say, this is the game I got to watch, or this is the contest I have to be focused in on, and that you start and make stories of, you make legends of, you know, things like that. So the league is going is getting in front of this. You know, they're saying, okay. Let's just make our rivalries. We'll we'll just designate these teams as rivals, and we'll do it to where we have even nicknames of these battles. It's it's almost like a college setup, right? right. The way they're doing this. So um, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll list off the two South Division ones. You can list off the two North Division ones. Okay. So yeah. So here we go I'll, for the South Division matchups. Here's what you got for the South. You have the Double Down Derby, which is the Birmingham Stallions take on the Houston Gamblers. And these rivalry matchups are all week two to start. So this is to solidify those in the second week of the season. That's when these go, April 23rd and 24th, or that Friday night matchup that Stefano will mention for the 22nd. The Double Down Derby is the 23rd. And then there's the Breaker Bay Brawl. Very, very, very much alliteration that they're trying to run with these. Uh, New Orleans against Tampa Bay is going to be that rivalry. And Stefan, what, what are the matchups in the north that they got as rivalry designations? So, I mean, this one makes sense. We have the Keystone State battle. Pittsburgh Maulers taking on the Philadelphia Stars April 23rd. And then we have the Northern Duel, Michigan Panthers versus New Jersey Generals on what, like we mentioned, that Friday. First Friday night game of the season on the 22nd. Now, I will, I'll say this. I have, not maybe not criticisms, but I would change one. I would change okay. one. I think Houston and uh, New Orleans is a much tighter rivalry. I mean, especially when you're looking at the Bay. I mean, mm-hmm. I live in Houston. I, 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 with the Texans and the Saints, trust me, there's, there's some bad blood there. And honestly, then I think the, the, the bandits even work better with the, uh, with the stallions as well. I mean, you got the horse thing going on, if you will. Uh, yeah. Those are my criticisms. Now, I have heard some things online of saying, well, why manufacture the rivalries? These things are going to happen naturally. But you know what? I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe you disagree, Zach. But to me, I kind of like it. It's just that something extra. You know what I mean? Week one, it's, the ho- it's kickoff, Easter football. I mean, you want to create some excitement for week two, yeah, truth be told, there's not there's not a lot that's going to be known about these teams just yet in week two. Boom, let's have a rivalry week. Let's bust right into it. And, I mean, some of these, I mean, Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, I mean, that feels like a natural rivalry. It's right up there, Allie. Already, yeah. right? Um, but, I mean, I'm not mad at it. I like the extra fun. I'm looking now. Now, this is where my curiosity peaks is, if we're seeing things like this for week two, I'm now I'm really interested to see what that marketing machine builds up as we go out throughout the season, right? It's not just going to be, hey, it's week one, it's week two, it's week three. Man, we already have opening week, rivalry week. Then we go into week three where we start getting the, the schedules that are kind of yep. written based off of the positioning. Uh, I mean, creating a little bit of excitement, you can't be mad at that. No, I, I think that they're doing, they're doing some, doing this to help with establishing fan bases out at the get go. It's, it's part of the challenge of doing a hub format where you're not in your cities established, established right out of the gate. So one of the best ways to engage a fan base, that's not able to go to its games physically sans, of course, Birmingham, I 
you can make this uh you can make this as something that you can rally behind you know and have like a cause you can do do rivalry games like this the, the entire keystone state one it's it's very much obvious in terms of not only location but just uh generally my understanding about the two state how the two cities fare and think of each other different different sides of the of the of Pennsylvania and their own mentalities for how Philadelphia and Pittsburgh think so and at least the uh demographics of the city so I, I get that East versus West. That's how it kind of comes off too. you know, mm-hmm. that, that one I got, you know, the other ones that kind of was just going to be, okay, how do we, how do we label that label this? If we're talking like OG USFL, which I know again, they don't buy the, this one is not related to the history of the old right. one. We know that, but to reference that, you know, if we want to go look back at that and for some rivalries based off the eight teams here, we had the business rivalry of the bandits and the generals back in the day, John Bassett versus, Donald Trump, two mentalities, one lot, one lot suspending hypercapitalism, the other very much a minimal, minimal conservative, very much focused on team building uh, aspect. And then he had another rivalry that I felt just made great matchups back in the day, the old versions of the Michigan Panthers and the Philadelphia Stars, two of the top teams from that three year period of the OG version. Um, so if you want to look for rivalries like that, for those that may be like they associate these teams with their old counterparts or older iterations from a different league. That's how you can look at it that way. You know, if you don't like these Mm -hmm. manufactured ones, as some has put down, but I mean, it was going to like, this is needed, I think just to kind of kickstart something, right. You know, and it's more press, like it's building up, like what you want to look out for, you know, they got the two first weeks locked down. So why not generate a little more buzz around those first two weeks? And then whatever teams are good, the rest of it's like we said, college scheduling, best, best times, best matchups are put in as best as possible on paper. And we go from there, you know? And, and, you know, I feel like I bring it up every week, but it is true. This isn't something like we saw the XFL do this as well, at least once with the, yes, they the, did do the throwdown in Texas or the Texas throwdown between Dallas and Houston. Right. And so, I mean, again, kind of a natural rivalry, but I would argue so is so is the Pennsylvania, uh, the, the Keystone State battle situation that you got going on here. And like I said, a little bit of fun. Hopefully, I mean, really at the end of the day, what is this for? What is, what is the mission of doing something like this? It's not necessarily for you or me, Zach, and it's not for mm-hmm. a lot of the people that follow us necessarily either. It's more for people that may have not have heard about the league or, or, they, they just heard about it, but week one's already over. And they say, oh, well, what's this USFL thing? And they look up, oh, well, week two's rivalry, rivalry week. Might as well get in there, right? Maybe watch some <laughs> right. recaps, draw in some new fans. Because, I mean, that's, that's a big goal of any new company, let alone football league, is gaining new fans, keeping new fans, keeping things interesting. And, I mean... You're going to have a football game. Some of them are going to be high scoring. Some are going to be low scoring. Uh, but this might even add to the allure of a low scoring game. Uh, and we'll get into like some of the reasons why I think we might see some low scoring games based on the coaching staff. So there's a couple of key people there that, that I'm seeing that might snuff out what seems to be set up to be an offense heavy league. But I don't want to well, get too far ahead of ourselves. What's been hyped up as an offense heavy league anyway. I think any of the pressers that the coaches have made even going in, uh, like whether it was ones with the drawings or just talking about what are you looking for with this with this with your team? Well, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a high scoring offense. It's gonna be action packed twenty four seven. Jeff Fisher, I think mm. that was one he was the one that stuck out to me the most where it's like either that or or skip holtz where it's like, Yeah, we're gonna the ball it's always gonna be scoring. <laughs> you know, as much as we can. Score, score, score. Right. <laughs> you know. But I, I think the stabs when we get into those later, you know, and, and always, honestly, that in history of these spring football leagues kind of sides with early on, we're going to get lower scoring anyway to start defense always as the head of the curve anyway aspect. So I feel you on that. Um, t- tell you what, I any uh, say any other rivalries you can think of you'd want to want to see. Like I said, I want to see Jersey Tampa when they get together. You know, I know that won't be referenced by this version of the of the USFL. Mm-hmm. But like that one to me sticks out if I'm an OG fan, because I'm like, you know, that was a those were big rivalries back in those years, at least when Trump when once Trump bought the team in 84, you know, the, those two years, 84 and 85, they were definitely 
hyped up games mm-hmm. at times. Right on. I think you brought up the big one that I want to see is the Panthers and the Stars. I think that has a lot of potential there. I mean, like you mentioned, there was three champions in the USFL. The Stars were two of them. The Panthers were the first one. Um, and I, again, I still stick with what I said earlier. I think there's a lot of potential to have that Breaker Bay brawl but mm-hmm. shifted a little bit west with Houston and New Orleans uh, because I feel like that's a supernatural rivalry. And then I feel like the, 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 the Stallions and the Bandits could, could have some fun there. Now, I mean, none of these on paper are bad rivalries. None of them, uh, I think, if I were to pick my, the, the one that's the best constructed here, probably the Keystone State battle. I mean, just because yeah. it's such a natural rivalry that's going to... It would have to happen. There's no way. Like, I mean, if you're a Pittsburgh fan, you couldn't be a Stars fan on the side. At least you shouldn't be. You couldn't be a (laughs) fan like me that flip-flops. That's bad. Uh, But And vice versa on the other side. Uh, So I don't know. I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'm hoping that we see some extra... Extra, uh, I don't know, something extra in the presentation of it. I don't expect to see, like, a trophy or anything. But, I mean, that would be cool. You know what I mean, guys? Yeah. Maybe one of them, you know. Like, don't you don't have to have one for all of them. But I'm thinking, like, you brought up the college situation. Get us a lumberjack or a, an ox <laughs> or a something. You know, even just a log. A log we, would can, be fine with me. Can we get a... I'm just referencing the graphics. By the way, the Fox 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 uh, social teams here or digital teams did a great job with a few, with many, with all four of these. Um, can we get like double down derby? Can we get a slot machine? Right. You know, winning so like uh, winning coach has to walk away with that, or or until the next matchup, to, you have to you get the uh, get the horse that's exchanged for the Birmingham Stallions. You know, winner gets one thing or the other. Right. Right. You know, right. Or something like that. Or like Baker Bay, I will say the Bay, the Breaker Bay brawl, very hard one to say if you don't if you don't right. slow down what you're talking about. By the way, I, I love what they did with the, gra- with the graphic here, Tom. Who like that? Uh, I don't know if you've seen it mm-hmm. sliding down with the hat, right? You know, you got you got Kyle Slo- Slo- Slaughter there riding the wave. No, th- that's I mean the USFL digital social team. You can tell one thing: they're having fun. Right. I, I love the, the whole comic book idea of all of this. Bring in some extra graphics, make it a, a little bit different. Right. Uh, I mean, that's the one thing. And I've said this in the past with other leagues and I'll say it with this one. One of the great things about being a sp- spring football league is you have the opportunity to experiment Now, naturally, you don't want to experiment too much or you end up like the XFL in 2001. But you can experiment enough to do fun things like rivalry week or graphics of this nature or, you know, all sorts of just even tweaking the rules a little bit. I think it's I, I that's why I think that's maybe why I'm so intrigued by secondary or spring football leagues is I, I like things that are a little bit out of the norm, a little bit different. And I mean, so far, I mean. Going into this year in 2021, there was a lot of concern. Hey, the league's not talking much. There's not a lot of news coming out. Well, that is not happening anymore. I mean, we're getting at least weekly drops, it seems like. And most of the time, we're getting right. more more releases than one in a week with other bits of news coming in. And, I mean, you brought up the big one, dude. We have training camp starting next week. So, we have the rosters. Yes. We have the teams now really coming together. And I mean, in less than four weeks, we're going to be watching some USFL football, either in person or via simulcast. Well, well, you know, darn well, I mean, they, they were hiring, the, they were hiring social people that to get these contract and freelance positions down there. There's got, a, I'm expecting footage and coverage from there. They're going to have it. Why, why I, I, they've already kind of shown that they're going to put this stuff out oh, yeah. there. You know, it's time to lead into this. You know, they're going to have this stuff out there. I'm excited to see that footage when it comes out on Twitter and Facebook, them putting highlight reels of things going on at practices. You know, that'll be fun. Or they better have one where it's like, Hey, first day at camp, see the boys walking in. I, here we go. I would be surprised if we don't see something maybe not. And maybe it's not a video, but I think we'll at least for that opening, 
uh, when everybody's reporting, we're definitely getting some images. The fact that we saw videos, at least some of them, during that initial draft night, I think we'll get some of that too. And then, yeah, throughout the training camp. Now, what I'll be interested to see is if we see more highlights from something like the preseason matchups that are rumored to take place, Mm -hmm. right? Now, that'll be interesting to see. I don't know if we'll get the scores per se, but I would love to see beyond the practice. Like, here's our first look at some some USFL action, right? Right. Uh, That would be great. I mean, we're still, because we're still also kind of waiting you know, some of the rules, like I said, but we know the rule book's going to be majority NFL rules anyway. Mm. And it was put help. NFL had some assistance with that and officiating pieces. Like we're going to talk in a second, but we, I mean, we do want to see if there's new rules that they're going to discuss and practice with and scrimmage with be kind of cool to get some, uh, on-site discussion from people that are there talking about that too. Yeah. And that's you know? why I think again, speculation zone. This is definitely speculation zone going into this. This is why I think <laughs> we're definitely going to see that rule book before training camp begins or players report or however you want to mention it. I think we're going to get it by next week. I mean, it might come out the day that this podcast come out, which is Friday. It yeah. might. It like I mean, that's how much I feel that it's coming sooner rather than later. I mean, I'll be surprised if we don't see it uh, until after the training camp begins, right? Yeah. I'll be very, very oh, yeah. surprised by that. Uh, I'd be shocked too, and I, I think, like I, I think you, I think you see a lot of people kind of go get up, uh, somewhat up in arms. Not as like, I don't think we'll ever see another example right now of the like the two coaches thing from the from Colin Coward where they didn't show them like that uproar right, again, right, like right, we right. had. But like, I think if they didn't get, like, if we had to train camp and we're like, where's the rule book? I think you see some people going, oh, come on. Well, here's the thing. (laughs) Here's my take on it. Again, the ref's spicy take. Uh, It might, I mean, realistically, if it's more or less NFL rules, right? There might not be like a, like a lot of sizzle there to where when people see them, they might, if like, if it's built up in a way, people Mm -hmm. are going to look at them and say, oh, I mean, it's just NFL rules, right? We've, uh, we've heard possibilities with like the overtime which again makes sense with the time constraints and doing like a a, a shootout style mm-hmm. which i really right. hope it is and i hope we see that but i mean i don't think we're gonna see a lot of deviation beyond that i mean maybe we will see something different with the extra points i don't know if it'll go full-blown xfl with the one two and three but i mean we could i mean the, the aaf had some different rules there if i mm-hmm. remember correctly they didn't have one point kicks. Is that right? You had to, had to go for it. If I, I don't recall either way, shouldn't have brought it up. Pre, pre, I, I want to say that that was the case, and, but yeah, I'm not a hundred percent certain on that. Not going to say that is what happened. Right. Because it's been a minute. Jesus. AAF now is almost three years. Isn't that crazy? Three years past. Think about that. <laughs> Think about that for a second. I know it. That is crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. Cause that, I mean, that's really like the AAF came around when I was like right when I had just started the whole newsroom thing. Yeah. And I mean, that was our April fool's joke was that we were switching to AAF newsroom. Mm -hmm. And then the next day they filed for bankruptcy. (laughs) And I I feel like some online hold me accountable. And I'm just saying it was only a joke. It was only a joke. You get, some things are just coincidence. You, it just felt like it was a curse that you put on it. I mean, <laughs> it wasn't my curse. That's all I could say. There, believe me, there's nothing I could do to either help it or destroy it. And no, that post, no, we, no lessons were learned for other leagues like the USFL a long way. Trust me, Daryl Johnston uh, very much knows. If he doesn't know, I would be surprised if he didn't take any lessons. He, trust me, he knows. You know, that's, there's a reason why he preaches survive. Right, right, <laughs> right, right, right. I've seen it all at this point. Two, two leagues. So, you know, XFL as well. He was with that too. He, 2.0, 2. 2.0. 2. Yeah. You know, he knows, good you one. know, different situations as well. Got to spe- specul or specify that as well. You know what? Speaking of speculate speculation, this is, this is a topic that I think we're going to be speculating until we actually see what hits the field because we go off the, we go off the drafts, we go off the coaching staffs. You know, at least the head coaches, as we talk now, coaching staffs will talk later in the show. Um, we get, we're getting betting odds 
now. Early. DraftKings was the first to drop them. But of course, if it's a Fox property, Fox bets got to get in there. You knew it was coming. I mean, we you knew it had they to were going to have something. It only had to be, right? If you knew that they were going to get that, they were going to ask for that slice of the pie. It's, it's in house synergy. Corporate Fox synergy, my friend. I know it was gonna happen. Which and so yeah, here we are. It, I, betting odds. I love to see it. I mean, we have a couple consistents. We have some really uh, drastic variations because, like you mentioned, we have Fox Bet and we also have DraftKings. Now there may be some other odds out there as well, but these are the two that are out there now. Now before we go into them, mm-hmm. we were we were joking about this before the show. There really is an opportunity, and I don't want to be the guy to promote gambling per se, but there is an opportunity if you are a person that likes sports wagers to make some money here. I mean, I remember back, I remember back to the XFL, and do you know who all the sports books had leading at only losing two games the whole season? Mm, the Tampa Bay I, Vipers. Yeah, I I was going to say that... Uh, <laughs> that feel that was very not only ominous, but uh, yeah, I was expecting. I was I was trying to recollect back. And I'm like that that there it is. I know? told, which is hilarious after the fact. Oh yeah, all the jokes that the viper that the vipers get and tr- Mark Trustman's ba- bashing the people give him. Yeah, aside, hilarious. I told all my friends in Vegas to go bet against that. I said just bet against that, and it's guaranteed money. I said realistically, I said it's the chances that they're going to lose two games is pretty high. Any team, right? Anyway, anyway, the favorites here. I mean, this one makes all the sense in the world. We have both Fox bet and DraftKings share the same opinion. Odds slightly different, but we have the Michigan Panthers leading the pack. Now to me, there's a couple reasons here. First is they arguably have maybe the biggest name coach in the league. Yep. Two, which I don't think this should factor into gambling, but they also have the biggest following by any team. Yeah. Now that shouldn't factor in, but I think it does because I, again, using the Tampa Bay bandits or Tampa Bay bandits, Tampa Bay Vipers, as an example, I think the only reason that they were ranked so high is because the Orlando hotshots of the AAF did so well, and they weren't even related at all. That's my conspiracy theory. (laughs) Now, I don't think the Panthers are necessarily going to end up like the Vipers here, but I definitely think there's some room. We're going to see these vary. I mean, we haven't even seen training camp. Clearly, if these, I mean, one of the odds makers has to be wrong, right? At least with the rest of them, which we'll get I mean, yeah, you would would think. Look, these are, spring football is such an, we've learned and seen is such an uncertain property to bet on until things hit the field anyway. You, you got to gotta see how this plays out. I, I think Jeff Fisher's a solid, ga- if you have no pun intended, solid gamble to make as an option if you were looking at a team that says, okay, uh, you know, veteran, veteran, you know, pro coach has been, has been to a Super Bowl, multiple AFC championships in the NFL, um, you know, a few years away, he's back in the ringer, makes a draft that looks pretty, pretty solid on paper on all both sides of the ball or two of, well, the two main sides of the ball, obviously special teams. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I put him up there too. I think odds makers say, oh, Jeff Fisher. All right. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd be picking Jeff Fisher myself. You know, I'm, I'm kind of surprised, like even like I'm, this is where it's like surprising for two or three of the teams where I'm like, it's a bit of variation. Cause like. For for example, the bandits. Mm-hmm. You know, Foxbet has them at number two. And well, Todd Haley's running that ship. You know, head, head coach has had a success as an offensive coordinator to a degree, has set up an offense that very much fits his skill set. Meanwhile, DraftKings has them at five. Right. You know, as in over as championship odds, by the way. Right. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, yeah, the breakers who this is the Fox one. Bet, this is the yeah. craziest one to me. <laughs> Yeah, freaking Breaker Nation is sitting here going, <laughs> we're eight on Fox. Our, our own, the home, the own home site's got us at the bottom, but then DraftKings is like, oh, they're five or they're Number two. They're, th- they're sorry, they're two. I I was thinking the Bandits. Yeah, they're two on DraftKings. 
you know, see the very, again, variation there, you know, Larry Fedora, like Larry Fedora, you know, college coach entirely, not even, it's not even that concrete of a thing that I would put it down, but you know, maybe it's for da- DraftKings that go maybe, well, design a roster that's kind of around his, his setup. Maybe that's where we're looking at here. You know, I, <laughs> everyone's got their own lines and setups, you know, each, each sports book puts it their own way and they have different markers and their own system of, uh, setting up these, you know, odds makings. Right. So hard well, to say. There's another thing they do kind of agree on a little bit is that there's not much excitement about the Houston gamblers because I mean, they're in a three-way tie over on DraftKings, the generals, stallions, and gamblers. They're coming at seven on, on Fox bet again. We'll see. I mean, I'm a flip-flop. I don't even care. I will say it. We'll see what happens, who I'm rooting for this year. Right now, I'm still a Gamblers fan, and I think this is egregious, and I think there's there's going to be some movement here. Um, but again, I, I, I can't fault the Panthers being in that top spot, right? You have the coach, the name. You have, I mean, the following doesn't necessarily matter, especially because there's really no home games for them if you will now unless you get to that championship game you could have a lot of those michigan panthers fans show out right so you could we could see some some something interesting play out there uh but overall again these are so early 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 betting odds i mean we'll probably even see these variate throughout training practice depending on I mean, surely there's going to be news and notes and highlights and, you know, I don't want it to happen, but it's possible that an injury happens and you have to start shuffling around those rosters before the season even begins. And then especially as you get into week one, I mean, we're, I think we're going to see a good a good amount of movement in this list throughout the season. Yes. I mean, realistically, four teams per division, it's going to be, unless one team just doesn't win at all, it's very, I mean, it, it's possible that there, like one game separates teams from the postseason, right? So, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's it's fun to see the early ons. It'll be fun to look back at this. Again, as we're nearing the playoffs, as we're heading into the championship, and see what was it before and where did it end up being? Um, because, I mean, it's almost... 100% unlikely that either one of these got it 100% perfect this early on. But if you're a gambling man, that's where the money's made. <laughs> no doubt about it. I I I'm I've not I have not as been as much um I will say myself I will probably be more interested in, with the USFL in this instance to test out my gambling chops perhaps, you know. Mm-hmm. Again, gamble responsibly if you do. That's not, this isn't advocating anything. I'm just telling you that, you know, you you get into sports commentating and discussion, eventually it does come up and it's becoming more popular across the U S you know, it's, it's going to be widespread at some point, you know, that movement's happening already. It's been well bound. It's been well uh, bound across the U S for many of the States. Uh, so, I mean, it's becoming more and more sports culture every day. So like it was going to happen. The XFL did a solid job at putting the lines there on for their games Mm -hmm. the usfl is going that same route and fox is like we know they've dived into it with fox bet and their own assets and pieces of their sports properties so here we are you know but you know spring football completely volatile so early lines the panthers though i I like it and actually looking at DraftKings, i misread this because the bandits are number two on DraftKings as well for that board see here's what screws me up DraftKings has it listed yep. where they do col- where they do the so Foxbet does the columns where it's up and then back up and down again. DraftKings it's zigzag. It's like pattern. a snake, yeah. So the bandits are two like the the two consistent ones that odds makers on these sites like Panthers bandits. The breakers have a lot of volatility. The stallions have a lot of volatility apparently as well. So just things to keep in mind as we go. But yeah, yeah, it, it, it was going to come up. DraftKings was the first. Foxbet's the next. And you're going to have to make decisions on those lines as well. Another thing that came out this week, officials. My favorite thing. Crews. You know, Here we go. Vaughn's ready, ready for it every show. Sign me up. I'm <laughs> telling you, if there is like an official USFL ref shirt that isn't just like one of these, mm-hmm. I'll pay money. 
somehow smuggle it out. I won't take it because I, funny story, actually, real quick, since we're talking about this. When I was at the Mega Bowl, the Spring League Championship, I was out on the field taking pictures of uh, the players celebrating with the trophy. And there was some other, I don't know who he was. He was, he was, I thought he was a child, but he had a, he had a camera. So I don't know. He was a photographer of some sort. And I watched him pick up one of the championship shirts and try to put it in his pocket. And I'm like, well, I mean, I'm not going to tell on him. Right. (laughs) And I mean, it wasn't 30 seconds later. So like, I I don't even know where this person came from. One of, it wasn't an official, but it was somebody that worked for the spring league and said, nobody that is for the team and the players. And I honestly, I, if that kid's watching, I'm, I I mean, I don't know your name and I'm not going to say what you look like. But I'm glad I was there to witness it. It was kind of funny. <laughs> that being said, I mean, I'm not taking a ref shirt because I see what happens. I would, God, that would be the worst feeling in the world is that kid is pulling it out of his back. Oh, I didn't know. You knew, kid. You knew exactly what you were doing over there. Okay, funny, funny side story just because <laughs> I, I got to bring this up when I talk about things like this. Um, this isn't even like. This isn't even like a sneaky steal thing. I didn't, that's, I'm not saying I did something like that, but, um, col- setting college oh, there basketball you go. game at ball state university where I'm putting food under a coat. I got a sandwich <laughs> and a drink from the commissary. I'm bringing it in. My friends get through easy peasy, lemon squeezy, nothing, no problem with getting through. I get in the lady stops and goes, what's in your coat? And just like me, just like, uh, just like a very flexible piece of banded metal. I go, oh, I'm sorry. Here's a sandwich. Here's a drink. Uh, what do you want me to do with this? And I have to go sit down. They have to watch me eat the sub <laughs> and my, and finish my drink. And then I can go sit there. Uh, so, you know, you want to talk about embarrassing? Yeah. yeah that, I definitely have been in that spot. <laughs> it is, uh, it is not pleasant. It looks weird. I mean, like we're talking a few, we're talking upwards of a few thousand people in Worthen Arena passing by and I'm sitting at a freaking car. I'm sitting at like one of those fold out long tables, shoving, it down so you can shoving it. down a sandwich, looking at people go by. <laughs> and I'm like, this is my life right now. <laughs> I've been there. Oh man. Been there, man. You know, I'm st- I feel like ma- there's, we could probably fill a whole hour with shenanigans from sports events. <laughs> yes. Yes. We'll save that one for another day because I have. Oh, yeah, I got another oh, one. I, I got, got another story I will hold on to for another time. <laughs> that is also very good. I'm gonna have to. <laughs> mine. I know. I need to wait because I need to find out the re- the best way to like filter out who they may be. <laughs> okay. And what happened because they're so funny. The the stories are super funny, but I know the other people in them would not want me to be telling them. So I have to like, I got to be smart about how I sanitize them. Anyway. Sorry for getting us off track. <laughs> referees, no. referees here. So I'll let you take take the pedestal no, no, back. No, no, <laughs> you're good. You're good. As we were talking about the the USFL, they made a few. So they made a few announcements this week. Besides just the rivalries, um, one of the other ones that stuck out to a lot of people was that you know we were we were talking about you know they're getting and they're getting referees that are in the NFL pathway program, and they announced the crews. So the USFL finally put out and you can look these up on their social that they have them out and about, but they've listed the five different game crews. They're going to be using 35 referees in total. 32. 32 yeah. Sorry. 32 of them being in that pathway program that I was mentioning earlier. And even Mike Pereira, you know, had a few, had a comment. Of course he has to have some commentating on this cause he is heading up officiating. So I will list off some of that from the press release on that said, issue. So let's, uh, let's read off what Mr. Pereira had had to say. So quote, the USFL will have the best officials, not currently in the NFL. So quick, quick, bold statement right there out of the gate. Hey, he would know he was head of, right. he headed up officiating in the NFL. He's, he was revol- He's been to many revolutionary in terms of the broadcasting space for how officiating is conducted slash discussed on broadcasts fox helped push that with their in kind of their like in studio official correspondent so continuing this statement quote our association with the nfl officiating department clearly serves the usfl by supplying officials who are ready to call games at the highest level and it also benefits the nfl by providing professional game experience for those who are just a step away from working sundays in the fall he even goes on to say in fact 
I expect several officials calling USFL games this spring to be officiate to officiate in the NFL late this year. So the confidence very high, the quality he expects out of this very high, mm-hmm. something you would expect as a fan, something that I think people hold to a high standard when they want to see a new football league coming from an NFL stance. They want officiating to be at a high level. Absolutely. Seeing sloppy officiating play is a massive turnoff for diehard fans. That's a lot of confidence you're putting back there. It's a guy that knows his stuff and has been through the ringer. He's still very involved in the scene, of course. I mean, high standard, high pedigree has to be put here. And I mean, and these these aren't referees that are just popping up out of nowhere. I mean, they're refing in collegiate levels, right? And we're talking like exactly Big Ten, Pac-12, all that good stuff, right? They're all the power fives, right? All the big ones are there. And I mean, realistically, we we talked about it before about how it, spring leagues are an opportunity for players. They're also an opportunity for coaches, but. I mean, let's not forget they're an opportunity for officials as well, referees that, I mean, want to move up, want to be in those bigger games. I mean, and this is this is at least one of those new pathways there. Now, I will say it is interesting because if we go back, rewind a little bit a couple weeks ago to the XFL's big announcement about partnership, uh, they're partnering with the NFL, Right. I mean, a big part of it was around safety, officiating, and then maybe some other pe- pl- uh, things down the line, like international scouting and so on and so forth. Now, I don't know. Does this lessen the XFL's announcement? I mean, I don't think it hurts either of them. I mean, it's good for both of them. Uh, but I'm curious what you're thinking. Like, again, I don't think that it hurts either, but does it lessen? The impact of the XFL's announcement. uh, I don't know if it fully lessens. I think that what we're, what we're getting is that the NFL, the NFL wants to be hands off and seeing something else succeed. It is very much a, you know, it's considered the gatekeeper of the sport. It's the, it's the big, it's the big imposing figure of football. It's really the only league that besides if you don't count, if you don't look at college football, it's the only professional league that really stands on two feet and towers over everyone else. And so it kind of goes there and goes, Hey, you know what? We don't, <laughs> we want to see one of these stick around. Cause you know, we've tried this, we've tried the spur, the spring and alternative scene, you know, results mixed, and we don't want to directly be involved in spending on that. But if you can make something work and we can work with you, We'd love to see it. So I think, I think what they're doing is they're, they're looking at, you know, and some of these are of course, friendly connections like Fox sports. They have a great, they've had a great connection with the NFL since they really stepped in the scene in the nineties right. and took the N and took the NFC's package. You know, they swooped from under CBS's own wings mm-hmm. for crying out loud. That was a big deal back in the day. Fox has held onto that tight and they've been tops in ratings for most of those years in terms of NFL games, uh, in, you know, on a standard Sunday broadcasting. So, you know, they have good relationships there. You know, I think that Fox kind of goes, all right, we can learn, we can get a lot of lessons from our buddies over the NFL. We're not stepping on their toes, Mm -hmm. you know, and the NFL looks at that and goes, well, they've been great partners, so we can give them those tidbits and that's a good relationship. And if one of these leagues or both the best case scenario works at both or one stays, the NFL has a league that many coaches have been hoping stays around a league where players, other coaching members that are in the community, that community can go and hopefully get a position and grow professionally in a pro setting outside of just the NFL. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, that's what the whole goal is outside. It's just that the NFL hasn't since NFL Europe went under in 07, it hasn't wanted to get its hands dirty in there. Right. Right. And so now it's kind of indirectly nudging saying, here you go. I hope you stay. I hope this works. You know, if it does, it makes the sport better. We just don't want to get invested because we don't want those losses again. No, it is. Because that's how they did it last time. You You can definitely see there there is a difference in thinking from the NFL this this time around, right? They're not maybe directly getting invested. But now we've heard at least from two instances, instances, one from the XFL, and then it was just uh, CEO of Fox earlier this week, Lachlan Murdoch mentioned during a conference, Mm -hmm that the NFL is assisting and even looking for ways to help them be a success, working with the rule books, like we kind of mentioned earlier. Right. So, I mean, realistically, one of these leagues or both of these leagues surviving is only good for the NFL because, I mean, it it keeps football in the minds of people during the offseason and really ramps right into that 
you know, as you're going into that preseason, gives you a little break, a little buffer, going to the preseason, going to your season, bing, bang, boom. And I mean, all content is good content. Realistically, don't tell me that NFL scouts aren't going to be looking at footage of these leagues sure. and using it. It's just more footage for them to get for players and whatnot. Well, is that not what the NFL wants anyway, is to be able to say, Hey, we're the face. So like our sport is the face of sport of the sporting world and is taking up that much oxygen in North America mm -hmm. all the time. So yeah, that's another thing that they get. Like you're talking the, the, the USFL, the XFL, whoever sticks around and they help, you know, it gets to keep that cycle generated for them. I mean, we're talking free, like free agency right now. The NFL, that's the big buzz right there right now for them. We just had Devontae Adams get traded in the Raiders as we're recording. Right. Like that's a big deal as there, as people were talking. Now we're not talking about that as a big deal because we're USFL folks, but that's part of their yearly cycle of we're in the news. We're sticking around. You're not going to forget about us having football as the sport stay around and be that thing. It's like, you're not going to forget about football year round. We want to establish that culture. That's the step that the USFL and XFL can take for folks. Oh, sure. And I think that they're trying, that's a market they're tapping into. The NFL is just trying to nudge that and say, hey, like I said, we want a pathway for not only players and coaches, but like it gives others that avenue to check out the sport. We keep that sport in everyone's head, in everyone's mind, mindset, mm -hmm. and it goes through there. I think, and just to finish off the question, I think it does, it takes maybe, it lessens it maybe a little just saying like, okay, the NFL is kind of for both these parties, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, the difference being is that the USFL is not talking like they're, you know, we've heard the quote Petri dish going right, around. Right, right, right. They're not saying or they're a Petri dish. You know, the NFL is helping them with some aspects. They just aren't going as far as, okay, we're going to let the NFL directly tinker more so. Like, okay, maybe they have the NFL behind the scenes with a few of the niche rules, but it's not like that there you have the NFL go, okay, try this out. Right. You know, or that's what's being implied. Like the XFL said, like, okay, go try this for us. That's not what I'm really hearing. Mm -hmm. Like, it's more like one's going to the other, like asking for help on its homework is what I'm getting <laughs> when I hear that. Right. Right. You know, <laughs> what, what can I do to answer question 12? Um, well, we did this and it worked. All right, sure. <laughs> Maybe we'll alter that or something. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how I look at it with the USFL and the NFL's little t discussions and collaborations, if you will, that Fox is elaborating. Well, I mean, you brought up the big point. The fact that Fox has a very good and tight relationship with the NFL is only a good thing. I mean, it'd be very strange if the NFL was opposed to the USFL just because of that relationship. I mean, they're broadcast partners and one of the largest for crying out loud, right? Uh, but one thing that I do hope that we see, just to kind of circle it back to the officials, and I brought this up before, but I'll bring it up again for maybe some of the new listeners that haven't been following along for all yep. the other episodes. One thing that I hope we see out of the officials here is similar to what we saw in the spring league where we have maybe, maybe it's a Mike Pereira up in the booth walking the officials through, well, if this happens, this is the call. If this happens, this is the call. Or if X, Y, Z, it either isn't a call or it cancels it. Because, I mean, for the officials, sure, it's cool. For me, I love seeing that type of stuff. Again, going back to the a little bit of experimenting, doing things that are outside the box with your broadcast. I really hope we see some of that. Uh, needless to say, I am looking forward to seeing how many of these 32 that are in this pipeline project do end up in the NFL this following season? Because if it's a substantial number, I mean, even if it's five, I mean, that to me is a win, right? That you got some extra exposure. You maybe got your name known in that officiating world and moved up. But I mean, if it's more significant than that, I mean, it's going to draw the attention of the NFL and say, well, well, gee, if it worked for that, mm -hmm. I wonder if it would work for this too. Maybe not players, maybe not coaches, but I mean, there's a lot of jobs and positions in any professional sports league, but football, especially that aren't somebody that you would see on or off the field. Yeah. Right. And so I yeah. think there's a lot of opportunities there. If this works, if you, you brought up the big one, if, the officiating is solid because, I mean, there's one thing that fans won't tolerate 
and it's a bad call. Uh, yes. I mean, we saw yes. a couple, maybe one, at least one in the XFL that the league apologized for after the fact with the Roughnecks and the Dragons with the time running out and that whole schmoz. Um, so, I mean, it's possible we're going to see something that's maybe unsavory. But if more or less it's it's held to a high degree, and I think having the Mike Pereira there and kind of as that the the leader of one, if you will, I can't remember exactly how he, he phrased that uh, mm-hmm. earlier, uh, maybe a couple weeks ago, but essentially he's he's running the show when it comes to officiating. I think there's some they they have the opportunity get those solid calls, get these guys moved up and maybe draw the interest uh, to keep this going and maybe expand it into some of these other roles as we go further. I mean, realistically, I've said it, you've said it. We don't know it, but I think it, it feels like the USFL is going to survive at least, at least a second season. I would go as far as to say a third. They have a plan in place. They have, maybe not everything's tightened up. Maybe they don't have, Uh, specific team owners yet but Mm -hmm. it's in the mix it's in the cards it's in the works and i mean uh saving money cutting costs now bringing new expenses in i mean just using lackland murdoch as an example again during their uh conference call earlier this month or the end of february i can't recall he essentially said they're they're paid for for the first three years unless something like a catastrophic cost comes into play I think we're good. Now, what does that look like? I don't know. Are they going to be all in their cities? Maybe not. But they will play a second championship, which, I mean, we've said it before, said it again. I think that's going to be huge. I mean, getting through the first season's one thing because we haven't seen that in a couple of years. But getting to a second championship and then furthermore starting a third season, I mean, that's going to be big, big news. I mean, it's been a, what, since the last usfl i think or maybe usf uh ufl right we talked about that really yeah the ufl is really if we're talking startups you know that serious startups you know ones that i think people had in the public eye for a good bit or at least we made mainstream news in the sports world Mm -hmm. the ufl really was the last one that was 2012 that that kind of went kerplunk there after about three years and then before that Um, it i i mean it had to have been the the original usfl I mean, yeah, I mean, th- there's been like the USFL, you know, I mean, if you want to count your, you know, NFL Europe, but that wasn't, you know, I feel like World that's League a different American. thing. Right now. I mean, like there is even World League of American football, but again, that's, it's multi-country, you know, it's kind of spanning the globe a little bit. It did have a big North American presence so that you can put it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I see your point there. And eventually NFL Europe morphed into really an NFL minor league for you know a oh, few right. decades. Right, right. So yeah, or a little, a little over a decade plus. So, I mean. That has to be implied too. So yeah, I mean, the UFL is the last one. And it's funny because, uh, you know, as we tra- when we transition into coaches, there's actually plenty from the UFL era, right? Or at least ones that were in there that league that are now back in with this. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, strange. And another thing, UFL it was a fall based league. It wasn't right. it wasn't spring. Right, you know, right. It was the the idea was because this is the alternate type of thinking. Spring, you're away from pro leagues. Fall everyone thinking about football is in the fall, right, which right, right. I'm for the, I'm for the former on that, I'm on with that you. mindset, it's not the latter. Too crowded, too crowded that, in the fall. That's my, that's my reasoning too. Where, where, where's the, who's going to have enough crumbs in the fall to talk about, you know, how are you going to be, how are you going to keep up with college and NFL? That That's the thing that I would say. So, you know, crazy that they did it back then. And people haven't really done it since. There's a reason why Fall Experimental Football League did. But uh, as you know, Mr. Brian Woods would tell you, who works for the USFL now, yeah, he kind of knows that maybe that wasn't that's not the best play well, <laughs> if you want a league like this. But Major you know? League Football, I don't know when they plan on kicking off. But I mean, I'm going to be honest. At the beginning of the year, I didn't think it was going to happen. <laughs> now I don't know that we just had Jerry Glanville announced, which might explain why we didn't see him in the USFL. Maybe not. Maybe this was a fallback Maybe. for him. But I mean, that's a pretty decent name coach. Now it is the only coach that we got out of the major league football, but I, I don't do, do they have a kickoff date other than 2022? All I know. And all people keep saying is that it's like, 
I've heard rumor that it's like the end of the month they're doing a draft and then like camp starts in April and then I think they start in May oh, wow. for games. It's all over the place. There's still too many variables for me to even like say what's going on. Like even team size, like apparently there was a stockholders meeting for that. And I can't believe we're talking MLS this right? much in here, but there's a stockholders meeting because they're publicly traded and they're saying there's four teams now. And our understanding was there were six teams and see what I'm saying? It's a lot of variables there. And it, you know, and you know what? I'll put this, this is how this ties in. If you had people complaining about the USFL rushing the launch, <laughs> the MLFB definitely deserves its flag because Jesus Christ, that one's trying to start up in less than six months from what we could tell. And we have no teams. We have maybe some logos possibly. They were just uploaded to their website. We have, one coach, but the day that this release is on Friday, they're supposedly getting a new website. Now, people in our Discord have joked that the new website is going to be a page that says coming soon. Now, I, <laughs> I will say I wish I had thought of that first because that is funny. But boy, if that happens, I'm going to laugh. I, I'm going to write a whole that article about that. I'm no joke. I'm going to write an article. MLFB launches new website coming soon. I, I would have a good chuckle with you. <laughs> that it's not even April good. yet, folks. That would that would be I, that would be a good one. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see. So we, oh. we we're talking about a little bit of coaches with the MLFB, but like we talked about a little bit earlier, coaching staffs, yes. all the coaching staffs, mind you, the, uh, for the USFL. The, they, they dropped this one on us. Uh, really, it's a, kind of everything coming in today yeah. so, as we're talking. Um, so th there's been some that revealed via interviews. There's been some good snooping, like the folks over at USFL Newsroom or Network. Um, they they actually, one of their guys, I believe it's uh, Ace aces uh, one of the pocket aces. One of the eight, pocket aces. I was about to say aces up. That's not it. Pocket aces who helps with that. Um, they He helped get the gambler's staff together. But the USFL dropped him officially via press release one, today. One real quick other shout out too uh, to the Breakers Insiders group on yes. Instagram because they brought us. I mean, they got the mother load with that Larry Fedora leak. Tip my hat, my lady style. Brought us all that Breakers coaching staff earlier this week. But sorry to divert. As you were saying, the USFL yes. now made it official. I just wanted to no, give him give, his credit as well. Well, you got to give credit where credits due. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna knock you for stopping me for that. I think that that's very much wor worth the shout out. So glad, glad for those for Breakers Insiders there getting that all sorted out. You know, community definitely reaching out. Some of these guys have been a lot open, a lot open with terms of uh, giving some details depending on how they tr trust. So we got the whole shebang. You know what? And uh, kind of let's. I guess do you want to go through staff by staff. I think just we, list off? Yeah, we'll alternate. You want to start with the staff? Do you have the the press release in I, front I have, of you? I have the Fox Sports list up. That oh. is what I'm going. On. Okay, so. Uh, so, what do you have? You have stallions up first. They did them in alphabetical. Correct. Okay, cool. Do you want to yeah, start we'll there? Alphabetical. Okay, perfect. Yep. So stallions, we got, of course, Skip Holtz as the head coach, but he's also listed as the offense coordinator and QBs. Something we saw with this, you know, and it kind of fits the theme of how these teams are being built. There is condensing of positions as well. So Holtz is doing the OC duties and the QB duties besides just being the head coach. So you'll see a few of those as we go down the list. So Skip Holtz, head coach, offense coordinator, and QBs. His staff includes John Chavis, defensive coordinator, as well as linebackers coach. Jonathan Heimbach, offensive line. Mike Jones, wide receiver. Larry Kirksey, hey, good to see you, buddy. Running backs coach. Bill Johnson is defensive line. Corey Chamberlain is defensive backs. So moving over to my team, at least for now, the Houston Gamblers. Of course, we knew Kevin Sumlin, he's the head coach, but he's also the quarterback coach here as well. David Beatty, wide receivers coach. Tim Lewis, Tim Lewis. And we're going to go through some of the, the call-outs here, but another kind of interesting name for the Spring League, defensive coordinator, defensive backs coach. Greg McMahon, no relation to Vince, uh, special teams, tight ends. Gordon Shaw, offensive line Mark Schneider, linebackers coach. Ty Warren, defensive line. Now, we got a couple assistants in there as well. Brendan Donovan, uh, defensive quality control. James Ronald, uh, running backs assistant in there. Again, solid so far. 
Yes, here we go. <laughs> Funny, we get both of our teams to list off. I get the Panthers here. So, of course, you knew Jeff Fisher was going to be head coach in this whole whole shebang. He is listed as only head coach on, on here. A little more bare bones from his staff. So, offensive coordinator is Eric Marty. Defensive coordinator is Danielle Carroll. Or is yeah, Daniel Carroll. Special teams defensive backs coach is Jim Amamura. Neil Calloway is the offensive line. Quan Drake is defensive line. And you have uh, team assistants, of course, for the Panthers, which will be Tony Brown defensive line, Mark Stewart running backs. Fisher, Fisher's listed as head coach. I'm curious. I'm assuming that you're going to have some shared duties for maybe like linebackers or a few other the positions. Again, this is a little more bare bones for his listed off, but. That is your Michigan Panthers coaching staff. Up next for Stefan DeList is the New Jersey Generals. Now, I will say real one one quick point on the Panthers. It is interesting. I would say he probably went with the youngest group of coaches, uh, Jeff Fisher there, kind of maybe serving a, as a little bit of a mentor situation. So I do like to see that before we we jump into the Generals. A lot, lot, small, lot smaller school guys. Yeah. That's something I saw too. Like a, got ones from like Grambling State coming up into, into here as well. Folks that definitely, the only one that I could find that was connected directly with them was actually Amamura from the his time with the St. Louis and Los Angeles Rams days. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, a lot of, yeah, exactly. A lot of these guys, several of these are come ups or ones that maybe are not as well connections as like, say, well, Mike Riley's staff, for example, right <laughs> here. So, yeah, we have Mike Riley coming as head coach, dual duty here. Uh, Robert Dieco, defensive line coach. Chris Dishman, defensive coordinator, defensive backs coach. Jay Loki or Lockie, I apologize. Tight ends, running backs coach. James Rogers, junior wide receiver. Steve Smith, offensive coordinator, offensive line Ken Watson, linebackers coach. Now we have a couple assistants as well. Zarek Rollins, quality control and quarterbacks assistant. Dominique Franks, uh, quality control defensive backs assistant. Uh, and we, we talked about the general's connection, at least when some of these names leaked out mm, two, three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And this is one that Mike Riley, I, it almost feels like he went out of his way to make sure that he has a little bit of history with each one of these coaches in one way or another. Uh, some going as far back as his playing time in high school, which, I mean, that's crazy, if you ask me. Uh, right. But then that takes us over to the the breakers, my man uh, tipping his hat over there. So I'll tip it over to you. Yeah, I know. We these Several of these already got bro- broke early, and we've, we've talked about a few of these on, the sh- on previous shows as well. But I will go through them, of course, as we have before. So Larry Fedora listed as your head coach of, of course, your New Orleans Breakers. Meanwhile, Nathan Burton, secondary coach. So we have him lined up. Your offensive coordinator quarterbacks. This one was already T was already listed off and was broken earlier. Uh, Noel Mazone, you know, already listed as coordinator and quarterbacks. Paul Spicer, defensive line coach. We have Jonathan Tenuta, who is defense coordinator linebackers. Jim Turner. Offensive line coach Patrick Washington is wide receivers. Then you have team assistant here that include Matt Butterfield, special teams and tight ends, and Greg Patrick, defensive line, listed off for your New Orleans Breakers. And and I get the I get the duty I get the Philadelphia Stars here. So, but I think I practiced enough to where I can make my way through without making some major mistakes. But of course, the one we've all known, Bart Andrus, head coach. Bart, uh, Martin Bayless, cornerback, special teams. Marcel Belfay, wide receivers mm-hmm. coach. There you Jeff go. Jaginski, close there enough. Offensive line coach. Brandon McGuire, defensive line. Brad Miller, defensive coordinator. Glenn Smith, tight ends. Couple assistants. Brock Olivo, Olivo, I apologize. Offensive quality control, running backs, assistants. And on defensive qu- uh, quality control, we have George Jackson taking you over to Pittsburgh. Yeah. You, so you're seeing here also as everyone's got different titles and su- such right. too, of course, that's one thing. I mean, coaching staffs, that's how they line up. Everybody's got a different sketch up and scheme, but I, I found this fascinating so far as we're going down the list. Like, you know, some jobs I mean, like I expect like some positions to be listed off, but I think some are just consolidating into like coordinator spots oh, sure. as we're seeing, like, again, going to the Panthers, very bare bones one, you know, just coordinator, coordinator, a few position specialty coaches, but nothing too fancy. Meanwhile, though, as we're talking for the Maulers, definitely a filled up roster of folks here. Kirby Wilson listed off as 
your head coach, but I'm going to be honest, he's probably going to be talking to the running backs guy has a history of it. Just if you don't re- folks that don't remember, that is kind of his expertise, but let's go into everyone else that he's got signed on. So Rick Courtright, defensive line coach. And a few of these were already listed off in other leaks for, via interview that he had as well. So for example, Jaron Horton, you already, you already knew him. We've mentioned him in, in previous discussions on here, defensive coordinator, defensive backs uh, from UConn had his time in the AAF as well. Um, also another one we listed off John Tomlinson. That was a different discussion piece. That's your offense coordinator, quarterbacks coach. Uh, other people that are signed on here for the, for the Maulers, you got Mark Hull, uh, Brian Kyatt, and that's the best way I'm going to pronounce, pronounce that. And Steve Looney or Loney. I think it's Looney there. Offensive line and tight ends for the Maulers and assistants, Will Johnson for running backs and Jack Nudo for defensive backs. Again, he, again, I'm assuming Wilson's going to help with the running backs. So just, uh, if I had to get a hunch, just not listed there. Right on. So that leaves us last but not least Tampa Bay bandits heading in head coach, Todd Haley. We knew that one freight Gans junior tight end special teams, Trey Jackson, linebackers, Carnell Lake, uh, defensive backs, now, this one's an interesting one. Pepper Johnson, defensive coordinator, defensive line. Pat, yeah. Pat Perlis of Pearls. I, I apologize. Perlis, I believe, is what it is. Defensive it is line. Perlis. Uh, Bob Saunders. And he's got a, this is, this is quite the roles here. Offensive coordinator, wide receiver, and running backs coach. <laughs> yes. A couple of assistants here. Steven Thompson, linebacker, defensive backs assistants. And Yale Van Dyne. An interesting first name there. Yale. Uh, wide receiver and running backs assistant. Now, I'm going to segue just because we were there with Pepper Johnson. I was talking about this on Discord earlier. This could be Pepper Johnson's redemption story. I mean, the last time we heard from Pepper Johnson, he was the defensive coordinator of the Los Angeles Wildcats for one week. One week before Mm -hmm. Winston Moss didn't like what he saw out there. Now, I know there was some things that happened during training camp, and I don't want to say it because I don't think it was Pepper Johnson's fault, but as the defensive coach, maybe that played into it as well. Or Winston Moss is just a no BS kind of guy. One loss is one loss too many. But needless to say, I mean, he kind of got done dirty with the Wildcats, but he has a little bit of a decent pedigree here. Again, he spent time with the Patriots, Bills, Jets, And let's not forget the Memphis Express of the AAF is the linebackers coach. So I think, again, we're the bandits. The bandits did build a pretty solid uh, coaching staff around Haley. And what we were mentioning, what at least what I mentioned earlier, I look at somebody like a Pepper Johnson as maybe somebody that could hopefully, at least for the bandits, slow down the high, at least what we're expecting to see in a high paced game. Now we'll have to see how it all plays out here, but I would love to see that redemption story. Uh, and I mean, quite, quite honestly, if you look at the bandits, they're, they're looking pretty stellar on offense with Tayamu. He's got a c- couple good receivers. And now on the defensive end, you have a good solid coach with a good defensive mind in place. That I think is going to be able to help these guys figure out maybe different ways to stop the offense, at least with that spring league experience, I think that always helps. But uh, I don't know <laughs> thoughts. Pepper Johnson is going to well, be a bust. Well, or is he going to come out for for the the bandits this year? Well, I think that's. I think you want, hope that's the best case scenario is that he, you know, gets his gets a little bit of a redemption of sorts. But um, yeah, I mean, if you're a bandits fan, that's and if you've been following the XFL and you remember that story, that'll stick out in your mind. You know, um, you know the wild. I mean, while the Wildcats were. I mean, they were kind of rough out of the gate, but it, I, I think that some, I think for some of us, we were still kind of shocked back then that he was let go that quickly. You know, I think if we're looking at the XFL, at least like 2.0, I think no one saw that coming. Cause it's just like, well, it's a spring league. Like it's week one, you know, no one wants to be let go. And there was of course other elements to that story, but you know, I think it, you know, he gets another chance here. If anything, the guy's been in this, in this scene where, you know, you know, you got to build up your, you gotta be able to build up your team and what your scheme is right away. Um, he also gets the luxury of, you know, like any outdoor football defense gets the first step ahead 
because it's easy. It's easier to get that adapted and be more successful against an offense that way at the beginning. So he gets a little more leeway. As I mean, hey, as long as things don't go a disaster route week one, I don't see him getting someone being fired again. I cross my fing- fingers for that case. But you know, I give the guy another shot. It's at least a, it's a familiar name. Everyone, it kind of makes people stick out and raise some eyebrows. I think it got um, a good pop earlier. I think people mm-hmm. were interested to see. I think people were happy to see it. I think the Bandits fans were satisfied to see it. Uh, so, I mean, if, if that's the, I mean, realistically, what else can you ask for other than performing, uh, for your team, which I mean, training camps are coming up. Hope to see it. That's what I want to see. I think the bandits, I mean, as much as I hate to say it, I, they're looking, they're building themselves up to be a contender. I think they are. I, I've, I mean, odds makers think so for sure. And I, I wouldn't put him past them as well. So, Hey, I'll def I'll take it, you know, and he's kind of jumped. He took a step away from professional. I'll see him at IMG Academy for a year. So he's getting back into, into it, you know, maybe gets a little time away from that. You know, we'll, we'll find out. Mm-hmm. I, but again, his, his, ex, his expertise was AAF XFL spring football coming out. A lot of these guys have that. So it's good to see rosters that have folks that they know it's time. You have to get up to speed. You know, right. I think that's a good thing to be on the same page as like, you know, you know, between the UFL, the XFL, AAF expertise, it's about getting up to speed, getting these guys set and going as quick as possible, establishing what your scheme is, what your chemistry is between players and such. So I get that. Um, someone that, speaking of like spring football esque, you know, I, we highlighted a few guys that stuck it out. Larry Kirksey, right away, dude was the C Lions head coach in the TSL last year. Um, we didn't list him off as one of the coaches we thought was going to get hired to the league. Um, cause there were some higher profile ones like Kevin Gilbride, Hal mummy, Jerry Glanville that, you know, they made their name, they made their name and were more high profile for maybe league hirings. But, you know, he did have some, you know, in terms of getting like on field moments, mic'd up moments, you know, he had some good interactions and is with a team that, you know, I think is going to be fitting him where, you know, he gets to be more of a player's coach, much like Skip Holt, I think comes off as, um, Again, another dude that's similar and familiar with the spring setting of getting your guys up to speed. You know, not only the Sea Lions, but with the Dragons as well, too. Yeah, yeah. You know, has a medical background, is with, coach with the Texans. So, you know, a little overboard. But recent head coach with this setting, I think that's a big thing that you get in terms of in terms of someone helping out in this set. Since Skip Holt is coming from college, now you're doing a mix of pro meets like college aspect of a spring football setup that that's where this is valuable for this. I think mm-hmm. for skip is someone like that. Oh, for sure. I think Kirksey Kirksey is a perfect pickup for any of these teams. So I think skip Holtz one out big. I mean, like you mentioned, at least last year with the spring league and even with the XFL, he had a couple of those moments and you could tell he cares about the team. He cares about the action that's going on on the field here. And I, we can, we can nail it a million times and say it over and over again, but it can never be enough. Having that, I think just the spring league experience is huge. And you brought up the key point here is knowing how, or having the experience of just getting everybody up to speed as fast as you can. I mean, because realistically with all spring leagues, a lot of them have a short runway from training camp to kickoff. And I mean, realistically, if this is if this league plays out the way that it it, it looks like it's going to play out, there's going to be a lot of passing here, and so having yeah. a guy like Larry Kirksey as your wide receivers coach, with again NFL experience, a little bit of college experience, and a, a good amount of uh, spring league experience, uh, no pun intended, with the spring league. Sure. Uh, I mean, perfect fit, solid pit uh, fit, and I think I mean it's going to help everybody around him too. I mean, realistically, you know what the quarterback wants a lot of wide receivers or receivers in general that just can think, think out of the box a little bit, have a little bit more, a little bit more that maybe their coaches are giving them a little bit more experience than the other guys coaches. And so I see the benefit there. Now, another, again, spring league guy, kind of a, a mainstay in these spring leagues that we're seeing come in as well. Tim Lewis coming in right. for the gamblers now, of course, he was the Birmingham Iron head coach of the AAF, uh, and more recently, the uh, defensive backs coach for the Seattle Dragons. And, mm-hmm. I mean, when you look through the list of all of these coaches, all uh, the, the coaching staffs, if you will, there's 
uh, just a great vast array of experience. Again, we we've we've picked out a couple ones right here that just at least in the recent past have have worked in different spring leagues and have some uh, professional experience. But I mean, when you look through the league, you're looking at everything from arena to world football league to UFL, as you mentioned, NFL, college, XFL, AAF. I mean, you name the football organization. There's somebody in this coaching staff that has worked there. And I mean, there is something to working for something like an AAF that doesn't make it through the season. It's kind of the opposite of what you mentioned earlier. Of how do you get everything in the right place at the right time as fast as you can? I mean, I mean, you'll learn watching, you know, 30 to 50 people have their dreams broken in front of them. And as a coach, I mean, it's not always what happens on the field. It's off the field. Realistically, sure. you sure. played football. I played, I didn't play football, but I played sports. Coaches are a lot of them, at least in some instances, good coaches can become a mentor for just life in general. Uh, and I don't want to get too outside of the box on this. And I'm not trying to okay. say that, you know, the, the league's going to fold. But, I mean, if somebody has to get cut. I mean, there's going to be some different maybe approaches to these types of things that these coaches will also bring to the table. And again, just using it from the mentor aspect, I'm sure there's some of these players that are going to meet these coaches this season that might have uh, mutual relationships for years to come and Mm -hmm. maybe even end up in a different league or in the same league or through those relationships as well. Um, I know I'm getting I'm going off on a tangent. I'm known to do that well. Uh, but I mean, overall, again, there's nobody in here. There's no one coach in here where I said, well, that's a bad pick. I like, uh, mentioning the Panthers earlier, kind of a, a different strategy there, maybe in smaller schools, maybe younger staff, whereas some of the other coaches, they're bringing in some more experience and and we'll have to see how that plays out on the field. Right. Right. I mean, that though, that's, I think that's the staff I'm looking Looking forward to see what Jeff Fisher's got in store. Because, I mean, like I said, I, Jeff Amamora, he was with him in with the St. Louis to L.A. transition. Um, but, you know, like otherwise, besides that, I mean, you got guys that haven't, that I can tell right off the gate, haven't really collaborated with him directly in the NFL. I mean, for example, you have uh, Eric Marty, who his last stint was with Grambling State, I just met. I just mentioned, you know, Mm -hmm. um, his background is with a lot of, with several smaller colleges, his professional background was actually in the European and, uh, different European league settings, like Italian football league, Australia, Austrian as well. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, um, that's fascinating piece to look up, but this is definitely a guy kind of, uh, you know, looking like an up and comer type of person that maybe Jeff is, uh, scouted out here. So I'm looking forward to see, to seeing just, uh, what, what Jeff has in mind, you know, maybe he's looking at more of the, I would say more the modern day is how I look at it mm-hmm. too. Perhaps that's what we're looking at here. Just kind of, uh, seeing what is more of a modern, more modern style, what you can get from something that isn't just, it doesn't want to come up with a stale background, right. if you will. Right. Right. You know, so that's kind of my, that's kind of my, my thing I'm looking at here. Um, another one, we got a uh, Quan Drake who most recently was with the Kansas Jayhawks um, as one of the fo- as one of the football assistants over there too, another mm. college guy coming up. So again, a lot mixing up the staff a little bit, not as many familiar guys. Like, so we talked like uh, Mike Riley, plenty of guys he has connections w- with. Um, we also, for example, Todd Haley, a lot of guys uh, he had connections with the NFL, Pittsburgh and Kansas city, mm-hmm. his time's out out there. So, you know, a lot of familiar pieces and that's, that's a strategy I can understand completely. You want some guys you want to be able to lean on that, you know, are folks that can get your jobs done. I get that, you know, I can understand, understand that aspect to it. So, um, Hey, staffs are at least solidified. You can look into their backgrounds a bit more and, you know, coaches are kind of taking what they can. One thing that I, like I said, I was, I was, I was not entirely surprised to see, but you know, all the consolidation of positions, it kind of just fits with the USFL is doing, mm-hmm. you know, kind of constraining a bit on how much you have in terms of personnel, how much you have in terms of players on that, on your roster, you know, if you're able to do those jobs and you're able to manage them well, that's kind of what they're doing is just, 
it's it, it does kind of cut some costs down too. Oh, if sure. you put it that way. Well, keeping that in mind, and it's interesting to see the different strategies from the different coaches, right? Again, like you mentioned, some are just just the head coach. Some are sharing roles, and there's no, I mean, there's no like true consistency or a blueprint for how each of these coaches built their staffs, which just adds a new interesting element. Now, I think year two, year three, we might see some of these coaches nail in on a strategy, right? If you see one Mm -hmm. of these coaches and his staff is performing exceptionally well, you might say, well, maybe I'll borrow from that guy's configuration and maybe put the pieces together like that. So again, it adds a little bit of a different, interesting element. I, I don't necessarily, I mean, sure. Yeah. In a perfect world, you would have as many coaches and players as you do in the NFL, but I don't knock them for it. I think I, I, again, the extra element, a little bit of exciting factor, of something different to look at because I mean, more, more so than ever, at least with the USFL, I mean, the coaches are truly building their teams. I mean, they pick their rosters, yeah. they pick their coaching staffs and they even to a certain extent can conf- uh, pick the configuration of what, what, who does what and how they're doing it and how they're laying things out. And I'm signed up on that. I'm, I'm all right with that. Now, mm-hmm. I, I think there, there is going to be a winning strategy and a losing strategy. So we'll see that play out through the season as well. But it's, I think it's anyone's guess on which one is or isn't the winning strategy at this point. <laughs> you know who wins here today? The fans that get to read the rosters because that's something – it's a, it's been a less minor thing people have been talking about, mm-hmm. but there are some that, you know, they've been waiting to see like, okay, what are the official assistant coach? What are the official coordinators? Here you are. Right. Here's your research. You get, you can do that now, you know, and that's another, as we've talked, check off the box, Yep. you know, One more. <laughs> it, it, I mean, there's not really many more left. I mean, it's just that there are people that still, I've been surprised that are like, Hey, we got this and this, and this, and I'm like, Trust me, it's coming out. Oh yeah! Like, it, well, I mean, if you haven't if you haven't gotten the confidence yet, you might just not be a fan of the league. I'm just being honest for at sure. This point, well, the big if, one, if <laughs> the big one left is when we talked about it earlier. Is that rule book right? I think it's coming. I don't know if there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of pizzazz in there of a lot of excitement, but I mean, beyond the rule book, to go back to your point. I don't know if there's anything else to complain about or be upset about or want from the league other than kickoff, but we know when that's coming. Um, I mean, we'll see how everything plays out, but I'll, I'll say this. There, there still isn't a lot of negativity on the internet for this league. And I'm very happy about that. I'm very surprised. I Mm -hmm. mean, naturally with new things, there's almost always negativity because that's just how the internet is. But here, I'd say the the community in itself is pretty tight knit. I, we're starting, and what I was hoping to see, and what I thought we'd see, we're starting to see more and more of these podcasts pop up, and different personalities online on Twitter and Instagram, and kind of do your own research kind of guys. Yeah, and that's only going to build as we get closer, and we're getting closer day by day. Like you said, when this releases, we're less than thirty days, less than thirty days to when the league kicks off. And I mean, my challenge to anybody listening to this, if you want to do anything fun, go and do it. Go create a Twitter account. Go create a podcast. Why the hell not? I mean, you don't, here's the thing you always need to remember. Nothing is forever. If you do two episodes and you don't like doing it, don't do another one. You're Mm -hmm. the, you're the master of your own domain. Now, if you do like doing it, continue doing it. Who knows? You might create a new hobby, find a new skill along the way. Um, I mean, I feel like, I mean, in, in anything, we've talked about this in the past, in, in any avenue it is, whether it's podcasting, blogging, TV, newscasters, there's usually this weird thing where people that have a one of those things doesn't want any more of those things because they either want to be, be the biggest or the best of this. None of that mm-hmm. really matters to me. I just like to be part of the, I, I like to be a part of something from the beginning. I like the startup part of it oh, and the community just, is just fun. So, I mean, I'll the more, the better. And, just go try it out. I mean, I think, I think test out what you, what you got with your passion is something that's wor- worth it. You know, for those that are, maybe you watch this and you're like, do I want to do a show or do I want to try out? Do I want to talk about it? Like, yeah, go check it out. If you got, if you got a chance to, you know, at least put your voice out there. That's what I like about stuff like this. You know, I, I'd, I'd say go, go ahead for, sure. you know, every, I think, uh, I think getting, 
getting a perspective from someone in a different viewpoint, you know, especially with show for football, for sports. I think that's great. You know, I know we have sports is very, I, I know sports is saturated with the podcasting groups and such like that, but still, I think it's worth it. Yeah. You know, if you want, if you have people that want to listen to, and if you want to, you have folks that'll hear you out, you know, <laughs> give it, give it a shot. Why not? I mean, we're, we're wrapped or just about wrapped up. I think we have one topic left on the on the dock here but this is a fun one and th- it's it good is. to see these guys coming back so alt fantasy sports if you don't know them you're about to know who they are if you do know them you're probably excited to hear what we're about to say they're returning not that they really went away but they're returning for usfl fantasy so if you're looking i mean that was a, that was another question is there going to be a fantasy football option now we all kind of at least the ones that have been around kind of expected the alt fantasy sports would come back and have a fantasy option. Well, they've confirmed mm-hmm. it. They're there. So all you need to do is go to altfantasysports.com uh, and you can, you can create a league right now. Now I was talking to the guys that run the site earlier, cause we're actually going to be dropping a news article on them over at mm-hmm. usflnewsroom.com over the next couple of days. And I'll tell you this, Zach, I don't know if you heard this confirmation yet. They have real time score tracking this year oh that was you. like the big thing in so, 2020 that was so that was something because i did their i did their xfl 2.01 and i know look there's a lot of money that's put into yahoo there's a lot of money that's put into nfl.com you know espn you name it to do all this stuff that was one thing with alt fantasy that i was like i can't fool i was i was doing it mm-hmm. but i was not a fan of waiting to get the stats updated like a few hours later, I like live stat tracking. Right. So them adding this, and th- I'm, I'm responding to this as I didn't know about this. So if they're doing it that way, if I can put a web browser up and I can get the live tracking, watching a game, I'm golden. That brings me back to like when I was early, like back 2011 was my first year I did NFL fantasy with mm-hmm. my dad. Right. And that was the only thing, like I didn't really have a smartphone then. So, or one that really I didn't could reliably use for fantasy football. So it had the web browser up the uh, mm-hmm. Yahoo one where it's like, you have all the fields that you can follow where they're at, at on the at and who's getting what. And it was like, it was just like this big data center. I just love playing around with it. So if I'm getting that, if I'm getting the live tracking like that, I'm going to have a good time. I'll, I'll, I'll sit back and relax with that, with two, with multi-screen <laughs> experiences every weekend. Sans the ones I'm, of course, down there. You know? Right, right, right. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just so like I said, I mean, look forward. Like I said, I'm going to be dropping an article probably this weekend. Um, with But they, they have a couple things going on here, too, beyond that. So they have just better draft experiences. They have better resources so that you should expect less downtime or slowness. There we go. Uh, and better rankings, projections. I mean, they're... They're looking pretty solid for this season, oh, and I'm, I'm excited to see it. I'm excited that we do have a true fantasy option for the USFL. Now, I mean, clearly, we have to create a, uh, a fantasy group for ourselves. I know Tron wants in. Maybe we do a separate one with the, with the YouTube community here. So we'll, we'll have to tinker there, but I'll, I'll probably this weekend, definitely before I write the article, I'm going to go and create a league, test it out. Just get the first full hand experience just so I uh, kind of have all my facts straight there. Uh, but they're working in conjunction with the Sports Podcast Gambling Network. So that's how they got the tie in nice. with the API. So again, we're, I, I love to see it. Some people maybe not love to see it. I love to see it is the community kind of coming together and everybody kind of helping each other make their products better. Um, so, I mean, realistically, from the gambling aspect, I'd say they're probably the leaders. When it comes to that for the the S, SPGN guys, I mean, believe me, I like to throw my money away and all, but don't trust my uh, opinion. Well, well, real time is real time is so important anymore. Like we live in a society, society, especially a sports society. Now, you know, get, we talked gambling earlier, but like fantasy, same deal. We need to know right then and there during the game. So, like, you know, that's a I say it's a massive upgrade because, like I said, even back in twenty twenty. I was sitting there going, oh, I don't like waiting for these stats. Like, again, it was several hours. I think one point it was, I think early on was like a day late. You had to wait mm-hmm. just to get them where you could like see if you won that week. Right. So them getting up and being able to have that with the other major platforms and they're going to do it where it's a reliable alt source, which that's awesome because there's not many, like in terms of alt football sources, the only one I know off the top of my head is uh 
National Arena League, and that one was okay. Right. I'm going to say okay to be generous. You know, that's great. I'm, I'm very happy. We need to get that um, guy on the show, by the way. Maybe we can try to set something up over the next we week. And, and We should try and do that. At least before the season. I want to give, again, I want everybody to promote. I want to use our megaphone for the community as well, right? And, I mean, I realistically, that, the more there's success, the better it is for everybody, for us. I want them there next year, right? Right. I mean, I think that that's, we should. I, I mean, I think like Fox, you know, we, there wasn't anything, there wasn't anything going to come out that we could tell for fantasy big from big platform performers like Yahoo. I wasn't expecting. Cause like, they're like many of the others were like, well, show us they're going to stick around. Right. You know? right, right. But so like, this is great for that. And Fox is probably happy hearing that or USFL folks are. Cause like, yes, an option more engagement for us. Oh, for sure. <laughs> <You know>? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'd do. We should definitely talk to him. We get get a chance to you or I will hit him up, and if he's listening right now, hit us up. Yeah, sign we you love up. we love do that. <laughs> Just saying, but that's good. Um, and that I mean, seriously, that's a great note to end on. Um, because look, you got you, now you have all the rosters picked out. Um, obviously you can monitor you, you can monitor them. You can start a draft anytime you want here. I think they're as of in a few days. I believe last I checked, because I'm in a, a newsroom league with you mm-hmm. on that. It should be that they're populating rosters, I believe, by the 21st. So, like, right about training camp, they'll have everything populated where it's, like, it's ready to draft, all your players are there, you know, and you can do your standard stuff. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it I don't should know, be shortly. I don't know the specific day, but, yeah, it did sound like it's going to be soon, it, it, soon, soon. So, probably, yeah, it, it, if anything, probably at the latest around the 21st or 22nd. Yeah. But, I mean, I think it might even be this weekend, to be fair. So It's coming up. Yeah. So there you go, guys, a fantasy option. If you were hoping for some fantasy football, go check them out. I mean, they, they were here, not to mention, they were here for the AAF. They were here for the XFL. Mm-hmm. They've been here. They've been around the block. So, I mean, if I'm going to go support anybody for a fantasy football option, I mean, not that there's any other choices. If there was, these are the guys. These are the ones That's that have been around. Up. It's coming a long way. Like I said, live stat tracking for them. That's coming a long way is mm-hmm. what we're trying to say. So you should definitely, definitely check them out. That's what, that'll be our final little message here as we wrap up the show. Go check out all fantasy, all fantasy sports for that. And you can sign up right now, make leagues right now. You just got to wait for the players is coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's all we got. I think that's <laughs> it. You know, Fun week though. Yeah. Fun, good yeah. week. Again, I thought it was going to be a little bit of a slow news week. Bing, bang, boom. Right at the end, we got those coaching staffs. Filled it out. I think we had a good conversation. Hopefully, everybody online had fun. I mean, we're, we're, we're having a good time. We're almost at 2,600 well, subscribers on YouTube. So Next week, we get to talk training camp. Oh, I know. Like and said, hopefully, we get, we get some extra content from the league, too. We never know. Get some, get some nuggets from training camp. That should be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, it's going to be a blast. Oh, Can't man. believe we're already here. I know. Less than four weeks. Again, less than 30 days until kickoff. Less than 30 days until spring stock april 16th you guys know the drill parties in the parking lot if you're in birmingham if you're not no biggie we get it we're going to be partying online as well kicking off at 12 p.m central go set the reminder now i get it i'm forgetful but you know what a string isn't going to stay tied to your finger for 30 days so go hit the reminder over on youtube while you're there if you're not subscribed make sure you hit the button but zach what do they got to do? You, you hit the bell. It builds morale, my friend. Sign everyone up. And I mean, who doesn't need a little bit of morale nowadays? I'm just going to, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> With our crazy world at this moment, just <laughs> sprinkle a little morale on me, you know, salt bay it on me. Like, there we go. No, you know? You, hang on. You got to. Oh, that, uh, you know. Yeah, that's right. There we go. It's like a salt cobra. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, oh boy. See, I mean, it only it took us 10, 11 episodes, but I think we're, not that we weren't having fun before, but we're having extra oh, fun we're now. We're doing good. We're doing good. <laughs> we're doing good. But yeah, make sure you subs- check out, if you haven't already, if you like the show today, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We post clips if you say you're jumping in mid, mid show or something. Um, we post interviews. We're getting more of those lined up. I got a fun one coming up from the OG era that should become, I'll be recording this week. I got another one that I'm posting that I needed to get that out. So stay tuned for that. Um, also follow us on our social so you can see those posts at USFL podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Again, that's at USFL podcast. If you like us on the audio version, follow us on any of your favorite podcast platforms. For example, if you don't like the YouTube one, which if you don't, well, 
I don't know. I'm sorry. I guess maybe you just want our voices. Who? What do I know? Uh, beyond that, yeah, Springstock, April 16th. Again, parties in the parking lot. Come on out. It's less than. It's a month away as we're talking right now. Less when this show comes out. We're get, we're we're getting down to zero hour. It's crazy. It, it's gonna it's gonna be big. Live stream giveaways. Food if you're there. Dr- some drinks. Oh, non alcoholic. But bring, BYOB if you do bring stuff. You know. <laughs> The party's going to be out there. It's going to be a blast. And the league's looking forward to us being out there, too, from what we can tell. So, you know, things are looking great. Protective Stadium is they're, they're giving replies to our Twitter account. They retweeted what? the announcement the other day. I feel like we're yes. an, official, an official event. We're an unofficial official event at the stadium. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward. I mean, realistically, Zach, the turn up. The turnout could be two or 200. I don't know. Anywhere in there. Because, I mean, it, we get a decent amount of likes. We get a decent amount of retweets. I think most people are going to stumble upon the event. Mm-hmm. Clearly, we, I know, we already know a good couple of people that are showing, like Chris Mason, one of yeah. our fellow subscribers. Uh, I assume Scott Adamson might stop by. We know mm-hmm. there, there's a couple community members. Yeah. Uh, I, I, my understanding is Roy Johnson, last I talked to him, he should possibly be stopping by. Um, Ron Frederick, he said he was definitely going to come on by. So if you like that interview, he should be there from what I'm understanding. Um, we're, we're still trying to see who else is there. It's It kind of depends because some of the people we were talking to too, it's like because it's the event that day, kind of gets a little muddled it's a big deal like right. they want this to go off without a hitch so you know but there are going to be people that have been on, either been on the show or that we associate with and of course like the hosts and guests you know we're looking at like for example you know tron hawkins you know jim mernier from inside the walls and newsroom relation as well you know right now it looks looking like our good buddy tom abraham yeah. you know should be there we're going to be giving him plenty of time as well so you know guest spe- guest hosts for our four-hour broadcast that we it's not just us folks we got plenty from the alt community we're going to give them their time to talk and chat and be live on our on our stage. And don't forget, Zach, the great debate is about to take place. Which team, if they were represented by their namesake, would ah, yes. win? Because I'm telling you, there's that star argument. It throws everything off. But I don't want to get too much into it. Expect, I mean, everybody that comes on the show that day, I have to ask that question. I need to get an opinion. Of course you do. And I will probably <laughs> refute it, even if it was my own opinion minutes prior. Because I'm weird mm-hmm. like that. So I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully you guys are looking forward to some ridiculous banter. And I was also talking to the guys over at the USFL show, the USFL yeah. show, uh, which they're a newer podcast. You guys check them out as well. They're, they're working on a little bit of a game that maybe we could play at this event mm. as well. So I'm looking forward to that. Like I said, we're all about the community, the parties in the parking lot. Stick around folks. Episode 11 is out and about here guys thanks for tuning in we'll catch you next week training camp episode stay tuned until then let's get pumped up and excited see you guys